days that define your story beyond your life. Like the day they arrived. So recently I rewatched Arrival and something struck me about the film that didn't strike me the first time I watched it. And I should just mention that Arrival is an incredible sci-fi film. Absolutely, but it's also an incredible sci-fi film about grief and mourning and what it can do to perceptions of memory and time. Even to our perceptions of before that grief, before that death even took place. And in this, Arrival shares a lot in common with Hamlet. Yes, Hamlet, the great Shakespearean tragedy about a 20-some-year-old boy who thinks he sees the ghost of his father. They're both stories about mourning and grief and death. They are, both films are wrapped up in this concept of death and how it affects memory and perception and our relationships with other people and most importantly, both deal with how grief affects time. Grief can affect the time that you're in, the time that you're living in as you go through the process of grief and the process of death death process. It is a process. And it is a process that goes backwards and forwards. It affects the memory from before the death even took place. It does so with Hamlet. We see him constantly go back and forth as to how long his father has been really dead. We, the audience, don't know if his, da if his dad has been dead for months or years or weeks or, as he exaggeratedly puts it, for days. We don't know. The other characters make it seem like it's been at least some months since the passing of Hamlet's father, but they never give us a concrete timeline. And because of that, the audience is left unknown to how long Hamlet has been grieving. If Hamlet has been grieving for too long, has he just become obsessed with death? Are these the ramblings of a madman? obsessed with death, obsessed with grief. We don't know. Shakespeare doesn't really give us that insight. And Arrival almost works the same way. The film, or rather, the film makes the audience think that it's a story about grief from the very first scene. But it's not. We're made to think that she's already going through the process of grief, through the, 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 the grief process, as you were. And then, down the movie, we realize, no, she's not. She is living in the language of the aliens. She is experiencing time as they experience it. But that's just the whole point. Grief is experienced like that for Hamlet, too. It goes backwards and forwards. It is a process. And the aliens make continuous emphasis on the fact that time is a process that it doesn't really follow line from point A to point B for them. It follows a wibbly-wobbly, squiggly, timey-wimey thing. It is a process, and it becomes a process for Amy Adams' character. And so it becomes a process for us, and we get to realize that is how death feels. It goes backwards and forwards. It defies the logics of time and space. It seems to defy physics because it goes into your memory and it, it invades memories that don't even have anything to do with death. And we see this as well with Hamlet. Hamlet constantly talks about before his father was dead. That happens to Amy Adams' character too. We constantly see her daughter alive and dead. It is simultaneous. It is contrary notions, contrary perspectives that are somehow married together. And the same can be said of Hamlet. And so what I'm trying to say is that Arrival is like Hamlet in the sense that both are stories about loss and grief and the incredible impact grief and death can have on a person's ability to perceive time and space around them. It can invade their perceptions of time and how time should follow a linear transition from point A to point B to point C. But that grief upends that. Days go by for Hamlet. Weeks go by. And then for Amy Adams' character, Arrival, it feels like it's all at once. 
And I don't know if the director intended for this to happen with Arrival. There are so many metaphors to death. The spaceship that the aliens come in is big and large and looming, and it does nothing and yet it does everything. And that is also death. It is a natural part of life. It is always there. And yet we as humans consistently freak out about it when it's right there. When it's looming before us like a huge foreign alien spaceship. We don't know how to perceive it. We don't know how to mathematically rationalize it. It is somehow beyond our concepts of science. And for me, I experienced death in my family. And so to rewatch Arrival and understand that there is not one, but two incredible stories that make me feel like I'm not entirely crazy is beautiful and amazing. And Arrival, when I rewatched Arrival for the second time after experiencing grief firsthand, I realized how much Arrival is meant for those that are grieving. It is meant to be comforting. It is meant to let you know that you're not alone in this crazy world where not everyone understands death, where some people attack it with anger, some people attack it with denial, with negativity, and that there are some that embrace it. And to make one final comparison to Hamlet, Hamlet never truly embraces death. I don't think. There's a consistent argument, or rather, there's a constant argument in academia as to whether Hamlet truly embraces death at the end of the play, when he is experiencing death, when he finally understands what it's like to die. Is that him finally accepting his grief, or is it something else? We never really find out because he dies. And so in a way, his grief never really ends. And that is another great tragedy of Hamlet. That with Arrival, Arrival is more hopeful. It shows us that yes, death and grief are crazy, and they can bring out the negativity, and they can bring out a positivity. That death can make us embrace life even more. It can make us appreciate what we've had, or what we will have, and what is yet to come. It can show us that Life is beautiful because it's going to die. And that is actually the end argument for Arrival. That the two scientists, you know, the doctor and the mathematician, are going to make a beautiful baby and that she will die. And it is sad, but she will have lived. And that is something. There are lots of metaphors to death and Arrival. The light at the end of the tunnel. And what I really like is that the light at the end of the tunnel isn't meant to be scary. It's meant to be an embrace that death can show you things, that death can make you appreciate things that you might not have appreciated before. And I really, really dig that. I, I really appreciate Arrival for doing that. It's something that not a lot of films that talk about death or that have death or where a character experiences grief none of them really come close to kind of grappling with that. And I really appreciate that Arrival is all about grappling with that. And that really, in reality, Amy Adams's character will experience grief for maybe for the rest of her life. The film is cyclical. And finally, I'll end by saying grief is cyclical. It never really goes away. So. Arrival is a great sci-fi film, and it's a great story about grief. And as someone who's experienced grief, I really enjoy knowing that there's a film out there for people who are experiencing grief or who have experienced grief. And they can find some comfort in a film that's about aliens and science fiction and time travel of a sense. This has been By the Bookshelf, and I'm Christina. Good night.